Okay, that was episode nine. I didn't get the title of it. Cello, squirrel, daffodil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty, What's the synopsis? Is it there? It doesn't have one yet, no. Oh, okay. I feel like Monica and Ross's mother in that Thanksgiving episode where I'm like, That's, That's a, a lot of information, information to it's- take in. <laughs> Good. Yes. And I feel like we're finally heading somewhere. Yes. Do you feel that way too? Okay. Well, I felt that way a little bit more last week Mm -hmm. because of the things I know. (laughs) Well, that doesn't count. Well, I'm just saying. (laughs) No, I feel like we're finally heading somewhere and I'm feeling like things are in play and things are paying off. I am still the most confused about what is happening with Alice. Okay. But I do think if one thing is and has always been true, it's that I think she's incredible. She's such a great character. Yeah. And well, (laughs) I've always felt that way. You are jumping on this bandwagon extremely late. (laughs) She was take. She was so awesome in that scene. I want to acknowledge that we kind of blew through her plot a few weeks ago. Alice? Yeah, when she was in the library with Zelda and there were the vi- not Berserk. The Visigoths. Yeah. So what happened? Did you follow her story? What happened to her in this episode? Only a little bit. It seems like she was caught in some kind of loop because she was asking about this guy. I'm not 100% sure if they went to the library looking for a way to fix the moon or if it was something different. But they ended up back in the library and she and Katie sort of discovered a way to maybe like remove the moon and make a new one. But it was, it was in a book that the page that she has from Quentin was torn out of. Mm -hmm. So it's like the world building, the world seed thing. Mm -hmm. I understand what's happening. And especially with the, uh, what are they called? The circumstances and all that of the moon and everything. But, but I'm kind of firmly on the moon side. (laughs) Well, so, so I was getting annoyed. At the I'm not, way they- not on the moon side, but also <laughs> like they didn't do it on purpose and they fixed her. So did they? Yes. Oh, well, she's right, not but broken she's, anymore, but she's moved in a way. I don't know. Well, I, they yeah, didn't but do they, it. She let them. She moved for them, but she's still butthurt that they <laughs> broke her, even though they I mean, fixed it. it. Is is it as simple as that, or do you, okay? That's what they've sure. said. That's what they've said. <laughs> I still think she's earned. Of course, the right she's <laughs> earned it. She's the moon. To be tempestuous. Yeah, of course, <laughs> she's the moon. I'll allow it. I'm just saying. So then, at what point did the Matrix begin for them? When they met the guy the first time. Okay. Yeah. When we he were came in there the first a little time bit yeah. during that scene, because okay. he's he's one half of the couple. That Penny okay. was going on about last week. There was a moment when things were going south and I thought for a second Zelda was a villain mm. and I was kind of devastated. Like, I think devastated. Zelda's still very gray, though. She is I like, mean, I think she's capable. Of- she's been more on their side lately, but I... Uh, I mean, yeah, it was like in the Matrix, so I guess none of it was actually. I was like, that's an act three reveal that would gut me. (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. That Zelda's just been bad. The whole like she's the other half of the couple out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what if it's dual state? (laughs) Has she been back this season? She was back this season in the first episode. Uh, Yeah, at the very beginning. Not for a minute, though. So then they still want this page. And uh, that's another thing I feel like we haven't truly covered in our coverage, but where did the page come from? It was something Quentin had. Yeah, Quentin had it, and then Alice found it after he died, I think. So it's as simple as that. There's no, okay. I don't I, think I still, there's any more than that. Okay, I still felt like I was missing something no, somewhere. No, I, I but. think that's it. I just don't, I, it, it's the type of thing where, like, I almost feel like I need to, before every episode, rewatch every previous episode, because <laughs> I always am feeling like I'm missing stuff. This season has been giving me that that level of anxiety. Yeah. I for whatever reason, and it's we did complain a little bit a couple weeks ago that it was feeling slightly convoluted. Mm-hmm. And this is the hardest I've ever had, the hardest time I've ever had following what's happening. It, it, for better and worse. I'll I'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, I but agree. it th- there's a lot. And and also, I mean, and this is some well, I said for better and worse, because the show a lot of times trusts our ability to understand and and keep up in a way that 
I appreciate because we don't waste time. Because it was like when we opened up with Mar- Margot and her eye patch, there was a part of me that was like, we missed an episode. And yeah. then yeah. <laughs> they explained and I was like, oh, OK, they're they're just trusting us to understand that they're fleeing. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I don't know where to go. For, I, I guess I'll do Penny and Plum. Did we we talked a little bit about Plum and then she well, she disappeared <laughs> mm-hmm. for three weeks <laughs> and then reappeared in this episode. I've really taken to her based solely on this episode. Yeah, I am. I am no longer convinced that she's suspicious Mm -hmm. unless she is like literally the world's greatest actress because she was very scared a couple of times. And she's just very, very charming. Yeah. And and I think the, the scenarios they were put in because it like she she's a traveler who can travel through time, which is rare or made up imaginary <laughs> well the traveling through time i think was because of what hyman said that because they had totems right because she and, was holding specific things because mm-hmm. we mentioned last week that we wanted hyman back and we got him back this we episode. sure did <laughs> dustin ingram he is super fun as hyman on this show i, I love it if, every time if, he shows up spoiler alert if imdb is to be believed i think he's in the rest of the season oh but. sweet that'd be amazing so because of the items she was holding when they were traveling, they were going back in time and they ended up in 1920. Mm-hmm. And that's where they ran into him. And it was very funny. Yeah. Ha- them having to deal with the casual racism of. <laughs> I love I think Penny's comment was my favorite. He was like, at some point, if we don't get back, we're just going to end up living the rest of our lives playing the or like play acting the help with all these casual racist people from the <laughs> 1920s. And I was like, that is solid because <laughs> he got so mad at first. And she was like, it would be better if we don't cause a scene. Yeah, if we don't and, get in a fight in the 1920s, <laughs> which is something Penny needs. So, yeah, I'm all in. I don't remember if we mentioned that she's a chat win, but she is. Plum. And the the assumption now is she has a relation to Jane because of the time travel. I would be fine with that. I would think Jane probably is. I mean, I fucking hope she's not related to Martin or Rupert, who are both clearly <laughs> megalomaniacs. I like <laughs> this whole fucking family. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, cause, yeah, because this this episode and the show, frankly, but this episode pulled off of the, the difficult feat of making racism and uh, pedophilia. pedophilia charming. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, because every time Christopher Plover and I every We're at a time point where it, they're kind of earning it, I'm kind of like just just they, coming around. They really are, because every time he's on this show. I am Fen in this episode where I'm like, I mean, he's not that bad. And I'm like, he literally has spent hundreds of years molesting children. I don't know what I. Well, but- I remember last because we were very perplexed with his arc last season where we were like, we hope they're building somewhere here. Yeah, because he was treating it last season like he had a momentary lapse in judgment. And right. I remember being like, is that possible like can someone just accidentally be a pedophile for i don't like, think you can accidentally <laughs> repeatedly molest a child That's true true but it was just very confusing and so i you're right i think by having the dynamic with finn and like you said the way that we're we're so inclined to like him because he's charming because margo well, literally because he's mr sheffield yeah margo literally goes he's grooming you finn yeah like, <laughs> and she goes oh god no <laughs> I love moments like that with Fen because it she like understands more than she gets credit for. Mm -hmm. That always makes me giggle when she like understands things that you don't necessarily think she's going to. And so I loved that moment in this episode. And I but I also love her her like childlike wonder because she still is not 100 percent about Earth. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like she 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 sort of understood that he was like quote unquote, not a bad guy or not a great guy. But until Margot was like, he's grooming you to sleep with because he thinks you're 12. She was like, oh, okay. Well, and the thing that I'm now wondering if we're doing with his character is like a super meta vague commentary on the separate the art from the artist Mm. debate that gets had a lot because it's like that's something that happens when like really big people who do horrible things have charming qualities or, or yeah. they, they bring things to the table. Sometimes. Yeah. Or they, they make excellent works. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm at a place that now and maybe it's Stockholm syndrome. I don't know, but th- this was the, m- 
the least thrown I was by him thus far. That's fair. That's fair. I think there's also, it's like I said, I mean, there is literally only so much I can fight against when it's Mr. Sheffield. I have like very strong nostalgia about him. So the big reveal there was that Sebastian is Rupert, who was Martin and Jane's younger brother. Yeah. Well, Martin's younger brother, but Jane is the baby. The oldest. Or, or she's the baby. Okay. Yeah. And I had forgotten his arc in season two with yeah. Hyman's story. Yeah, me and too. I, they flash back to it. And so that was them. That was Rupert at boarding school with his boyfriend. Lance. Lance. Yeah. So the, so the same Rupert that goes on to become the quote unquote dark King. Correct. And so we're in a kind of both ways situation where it's like he is the dark King and also maybe not that bad, but yeah, because apparently, guy, but, you know. apparently he basically became immortal and like did all this stuff so that he, because he had to keep Martin away and also so that he could get Lance back. But it's apparently mm. now taken 300 plus years for him to get to a point where he can maybe get Lance back. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it's still all very confusing, but I'm like kind of getting there now. I still believe, and I'm at a place now where I need to temper myself because I do that thing all the time where it's like, I still believe this is building to a scene with Jason Ralph and Hale Appleman on screen together. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I definitely feel you on that. <laughs> you need to be prepared for it to not happen. Yeah, for sure. Be prepared but for I, it to not happen. But I feel you. I feel like because I mentioned, you know, are we going to have like a Buffy season six thing going on where it's like, I, I feel like Elliot's going to go to the edge and then choose the right thing. So mm, okay. I just I would love that. And it's like, I think this is why to me. Quentin doesn't count as Barry the gays because he he wasn't it wasn't done to further. How do I how do I want to phrase it? Well, it, it wasn't done as shock value. Yeah, it wasn't done as shock value. It wasn't done to further the arc of a pre-existing, you know, quote unquote, more important character. Right. And I think the the message of it, I think what the show is is now explicitly stating about grief and mm -hmm. love and like moving on. I think that is as important, if not more important than a very niche social kind of like thing that we're going oh, through 100%. at the moment. Yeah, always. And I, I, as we've said many times, Quentin's death, I think, served far more purposes than to just deny happiness to a gay couple. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, there's like no question in my mind. Like, I don't believe for one minute, knowing the pedigree that's behind the scenes on this show, that they would be like, mm, can't wait to deny the gays. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I just simply don't believe that. So, yeah, I'm at a place now where, like I said, I, I think it's paying off and I'm starting to feel like a little bit kind of relieved. Yeah. Sebastian basically used Elliot as a conduit to have a seance with Lance and they yeah. had a really, really good scene. These are good actors that are. I know it's kidding. insane. And that it's here. Here I go again, bringing fucking every single thing we talk about back to once upon a time. But like <laughs> Sean McGuire, I always just was like, yeah, I mean, he's hot and he's fine, but like, He's very good at his job. He's done more in five episodes than he did in yeah. three seasons on Once Upon a Time. He's very good at his job. And I was like shocked mm -hmm. that I was like, this scene is like very affecting. I was like, wow, I'm very impressed. And, and I was like, this is now like the fifth version, the, the, the fifth different character that that Hale Appleman has had to embody. I know. <laughs> it's incredible. And I, I love the I love the mashups we've had, like I loved Elliot and Julia yes. and I loved Margot and Fenn and I loved like Alice and Katie. And it's like weirdly amazing. Right. Yeah. I was shocked when they were like literally. OK, we've talked about it and we think that Jade is cool. And we're like, I we we don't think she's doing anything wrong. But like that moment when the the one half of the guy, half of the couple was like, do it or I'll kill. Give me the page or I'll kill Katie. I was like, not now. Don't kill Not Katie, Katie. now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what? You choose this moment to dangle that as a threat in front of my face? What the fuck? 
so yeah, I, did we cover everything or, I mean, I, we definitely talked about some stuff. Is there anything else that, that I'm forgetting or that you think we need to, I mean, a couple things are in the middle. Like I, the Alice and, uh, the Alice and Katie thing is kind of in the middle because Katie was awake, even though we thought she wasn't. I don't fully understand what happened with Hyman. He's not dead now. He's not dead, but they put him under like a stasis charm. So he'll, he'll still haunt, I guess. Oh, so I don't know. They're gonna, okay. they're gonna fix it somehow. It, yeah, in 2020, they were gonna try to fix it. So okay. we're in the middle on a couple on that, and there, and they are trapped now, so they can't even check on Hyman in 2020. So we're in the middle on oh, that. Right. We're in the middle yeah. on Alice and Katie. There's some. There's still some stuff going on. So okay, I'm like excited now. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think things are paying off. Some of my frustrations are starting to Definitely. be worth it. So yeah. I'm feeling good. Good. So awesome. Okay. All right. Well, we will check in next week. Mm-hmm.